Universal Orlando, for better or for worse, has a track record of closing and replacing attractions on a fairly regular basis. In most cases, they hold no sentimentality, no nostalgia, and are, if anything, chomping at the bit to get rid of their old attractions. But this is all part of their strategy. Add new attractions, get people excited about coming back to visit the park, cycle out old attractions so people feel urgency to come visit before they close. It's all very intentional. And this continues to be the case despite them investing heavy amounts of resources into Epic Universe. So even after Epic Universe opens, this trend is not going anywhere. So with this being the case, the question that is perpetually on everyone's mind is what attraction will close next? And let me let you in on a secret here, folks. Last time I talked about this subject three years ago, I shoved my chips all in on Shrek 4D and Fear Factor Live closing in the coming years. And guess what? They closed. So let me be clear. This is not a prediction. This is not speculation. This is a spoiler. So allow me to give you a glimpse into my crystal ball and show you the future. And let me tell you folks, there's a lot on the table and very little is safe. And this is proven by looking at their former attraction lifespans. As you can see, no attraction in Universal's history that is closed has ever crested the 25 year mark. So usually what I like to say is that Universal has a 20 year rule. But honestly, in re-looking at the numbers here, you can see that only six attractions have ever made it over 20 years old before closing. So really, if you're approaching 20 years, you're in trouble. If you're over 20 years, you're basically on your farewell tour. And when we flip over to the current age of existing attractions at Universal Orlando, what we notice is there are a lot of attractions that are either at 25 years old or are already well over it. Universal is probably sick to their stomach having this many old attractions in their lineup. Now you may notice some attractions missing from this list and that's because I tried to narrow it down to the actual major attractions. I'm not going to waste your time here today talking about why one fish, two fish, red fish, blue fish is going to close. Uh, that's because I'm making its own dedicated video. It's, it deserves it, right guys? Yeah, <laughs> uh, I'm not making that video. What you may also notice is not here is The Incredible Hulk and Revenge of the Mummy. And the reason why is both underwent massive refurbishments that basically reset the clock on these things. I mean, The Incredible Hulk was rebuilt from the ground up. So yeah, I mean, even though technically they've been at the park for a substantial amount of time, the rides are at least fairly new or at least new enough to where I don't think for our purposes, it's worth including them in this discussion. So let's just go ahead and address the elephant in the room. E.T. Adventure, 33 years old, topping the list, oldest attraction at Universal Orlando. So you're probably thinking, oh, well, E.T.'s gotta go next, right? Wait, wait, you're actually thinking that. How dare you? E.T. is a beloved attraction. It's not going anywhere. Of course, there's the long-standing rumor that Steven Spielberg loves the ride so much that he will literally break all ties with Universal if they get rid of it, meaning they won't be able to use his properties in the park. But even if that's not true, E.T. fills a gap in Universal's lineup that doesn't seem like it's going away anytime soon. It's one of two traditional dark rides in the entire resort, and the other one sucks. And I think based on the ride lineup we're looking at, in Epic Universe, it's pretty obvious that Universal is not at all interested in building traditional dark rides anymore, meaning that at least for the foreseeable future, there is no reason for Universal to get rid of E.T. So why don't we just continue down the list and talk about an attraction that has perhaps overstayed its welcome, another attraction that has lasted a roughly about 33 years, and that's Animal Actors On Location, opening the same year in 1990 alongside E.T. Adventure. Now, even though it's not necessarily a beloved attraction, it doesn't have a cult following or anything like that, it has managed to survive despite massive change happening around it several times throughout its lifespan. When half of the Expo Center was taken out and replaced by Kid Zone, Animal Actors stuck around. When half of World Expo was taken out and replaced by The Simpsons Land, Springfield, USA, Animal Actors stuck around. And just recently, when Kid Zone was replaced by DreamWorks Land, guess what? Animal actors stuck around, despite it being in close proximity to each of these major overhauls. The funny part is, I don't think this is intentional. I think it's just kind of slipped under the radar. That is, up until now. 
Could Universal be keeping animal actors on the back burner for a potential DreamWorks Land expansion a few years down the line? Maybe, but I think you gotta look to the land to the north of this show to see what it could be looped into. And of course, we're talking about The Simpsons. The Simpsons ride was on the list of the oldest rides at Universal, which is kind of crazy to think, but it hasn't reached the 20 year mark yet. However, it's a property that is not owned by Universal, so they have to pay for the licensing rights and agree to a contract. And the rumor is that that original contract, which was signed with 20th Century Fox, only lasts for 20 years, which would have it end in 2028. The problem is that 20th Century Fox was bought out by Disney. Of course, Universal's number one enemy, their number one competitor. So despite The Simpsons' relative popularity in the parks, it's been believed for years now that ultimately Universal and Disney would not be able to come up with an agreement to re-sign this contract, resulting in The Simpsons and Universal having to part ways. With the writing on the wall, it seems that all signs are pointing to The Simpsons maybe even closing before that contract is up, allowing Universal to stop paying Disney those licensing fees and merchandising fees and royalties and whatnot, and get on with whatever is going to take over that space. Which, all signs are pointing to Pokemon at the moment. It makes sense, Mario's coming to Epic Universe, rumors have Zelda coming to Islands of Adventure, it would make sense to have a Nintendo property at each park, so that way Nintendo fans have to visit all three parks in order to get the full experience. And given the popularity of Pokemon, is it that hard to believe that they wouldn't just be satisfied taking out the Springfield USA section and replacing it with Pokemon, and perhaps also adding a little more space and looping in animal actors on location into that new land? But maybe it's not animal actors' time. Maybe they need more space for this new land. So perhaps you look north to Men in Black Alien Attack, a ride that's even older than The Simpsons that is also approaching that 25 year mark and really is giving Universal pretty much every reason in the book to get rid of it. I mean, for one, like The Simpsons, Men in Black is a third party property that Universal is paying Sony every year to have in their park. Not to mention that said property has waned significantly in popularity. I mean, they don't even really sell Men in Black merch in the gift shop anymore, it's just random stuff. And if you think Universal is not getting wise to this, just look at their newest attraction, VillainCon Minion Blast. It is a shooting attraction. The only other shooting attraction at Universal before this? Men in Black Alien Attack in the same park. They are priming it for removal. Now, that being said, will it be looped in with The Simpsons? Probably not. I mean, that would be a pretty massive land for one property. I'd have to imagine that Men in Black will be saved for something else. Maybe the attraction will just be a one-for-one -one replacement. But also keep in mind that next door to it is the shuttered Fear Factor Live stage, which has been left abandoned ever since its closure. It seems that Universal might have some big plans for it. Perhaps it could be looped in with Men in Black and create a whole new land at the back of the park. Bottom line is, there's a lot you could do with Men in Black. I mean, it's in a prime time location next to a bunch of things that are closed or are closing. And it's even next to backstage areas that could potentially be up for grabs as well. I mean, there's so much to do here, there's just no chance that Men in Black is sticking around long term. It's gonna be gone in the relative future. And you know what? We've taken care of some big hitters here. How about we go off script? You see this list right here? I'm about to talk about two rides that are not on this list. And that's because uh, they're both relatively new. And that would be Race to New York starring Jimmy Fallon and Fast and Furious Supercharged. Two rides that have a infamous reputation, let's put it that way. They're not particularly well liked, they're not particularly popular. Both tend to have relative walk-on weights, with the exception of Fast and Furious Supercharged, which because of its two pre-shows ends up actually being able to artificially inflate its wait time whereas Jimmy Fallon is literally walk-on all day, every day. Now you may be saying, yes, we understand that Universal has a reputation of closing rides, and yes, these rides are subpar, but these rides aren't even a decade old yet. Are they really gonna close these anytime soon? Well, let me tell you folks, this list you're looking at is just the rides that were the oldest age when they closed. 
What you don't see here are rides that closed after they just barely met the decade mark. Or in the case of Jimmy Neutron, Nicktoons Blast didn't even reach the decade mark. Nicktoons Blast was only 8 years old when it closed to be replaced by the Spillowy Minion Mayhem. So listen, if a ride is really that unpopular, if it's really that bad, I don't think Universal's gonna be gun shy about getting rid of it. However, Universal is more popular than they've ever been. They're getting more new visitors who have never visited Universal before each and every year. And that's going to continue to be the case once Epic Universe opens. Meaning, there are still quite a lot of people who have yet to experience Race Through New York and Fast and Furious Supercharge. Plus, despite Universal's efforts to keep their lineup as fresh as possible, due to the rising age of the resort as a whole and the addition of Islands of Adventure, ultimately, the ride lineup at Universal has gotten older over time. And certainly is older now than it was when Jimmy Neutron closed, meaning that there are bigger fish to fry now for Universal than there was when they were prioritizing rides like Jimmy Neutron to close early. So maybe a decade ago, Universal cuts their losses with Race New New York and Fast and Furious Supercharge. But now, given the popularity of the resort, given the rising age of current attractions at the resort, it just wouldn't be wise for Universal to dedicate their resources towards replacing newer attractions. So I do think these two attractions will still go well before the 20 year mark, so don't worry about that. But I, I think you still got a bit of time left before these bite the dust. So why don't we continue down this path? I mean, we've literally gone a whole circle around University of Florida at this point, And let's take a stop at Hollywood Rip Ride Rocket, which yes, uh, despite opening in 2009, is one of the oldest attractions operating at Universal Orlando today. And as we've seen, when it comes to roller coasters at Universal, that 20 year rule basically becomes a 15 year rule. And if you're over 15, you basically got two choices for you. Either you take the Dueling Dragons route and you close for good, or you take the Hulk or Revenge of the Mummy route and you get a massive refurbishment where much of, if not all of your track is redone. And as you can see with Rip Ride Rocket, well, we've reached that 15 year mark. That being said though, I will say Rip Ride Rocket, unlike the Incredible Hulk for instance, or even Dueling Dragons, because it's not anywhere near as intense as those, doesn't have the same sort of stress being put on the track that those rides did. On the flip side, Dueling Dragons and Hulk were both B&M constructions. B&M is an upper end roller coaster manufacturer. They're known for reliability and long standing constructions. Whereas Hollywood Ride Rocket was manufactured by Mauer a company known for building wild mouses. They have never built any ride like Rip Ride Rocket, nor have they built one since. Needless to say, Rip Ride Rocket was much cheaper to build than Hulk or Dueling Dragons or even Velocicoaster for that matter. And thusly, its lifespan may not be the same as those attractions. Combine this with the fact that I'm starting to see a rising concern of roughness on Hollywood Rip Ride Rocket, which is interesting to me because you do realize this is the same resort that has the Incredible Hulk that gives you a mild concussion every time you ride it and you're complaining about roughness on this ride but okay okay uh, the point being is that yes obviously it's starting to show its age for some people and it's starting to get to the point where maybe it's not as rideable as it once was for a lot of people so it seems like it's on its way out but the question still remains do you close it or do you rebuild it I mean if you look at the space that it's in it's in a very narrow plot they really could only probably fit a roller coaster in, unless you looped in the Blue Man Group Theater, which right now is only being used for special occasions. Perhaps you could fit a sizable attraction there. But again, it would require you to loop in other things. If you're just looking to get rid of Rip Ride Rocket, maybe rebuilding would be the right move, but maybe you don't go back to Mauer, seeing as you don't have to cheap out this time around. And maybe you do work with a B&M or an Intamin or some other more prestigious manufacturer that can build an attraction that stands the test of time. No matter which way you slice it or dice it, before the decades end, a decision needs to be made and Rip Ride Rocket as we know it today will not still be standing. So now that I've talked about basically half of University of Florida closing, why don't we jump over to the other park in Islands of Adventure, which as you notice on this list actually takes up a lot of the oldest attractions at Universal because there are so many opening day attractions from Islands of Adventure that are still operating today. So real quick, let's just jump right into the Marvel rides. Let's take care of those in one go. You might be saying, well, obviously Marvel's owned by Disney as well. 
right? We know Simpsons is going because Universal and Disney couldn't get together on a deal to renew that license. So surely Marvel's going to follow it right out the door. But here's the thing. Unlike Fox, who when they signed a deal with Universal for The Simpsons, set the term limit to 20 years, Marvel, when they signed the deal with Universal, made it in perpetuity, which in layman's terms is forever. The deal simply does not expire, meaning that Disney cannot force Universal to give up the Marvel rights. However, as part of the deal, if Universal wants to make any major changes or build any new Marvel attractions, they need to consult with Disney and get their approval. Meaning that, more or less, Universal is stuck with what they have. They can make massive refurbishments like they did for Spider-Man when they turned into HD and like they did with the Hulk and they completely rebuilt it, but they're not likely to build any new attractions or actually close any of the existing attractions that currently exist in Marvel's Superhero Island. Unless they want to get rid of the entire land. Which, yeah, I mean, Marvel's popularity is certainly waning, but it still is relatively popular and certainly makes for some great attractions as Spider-Man is still arguably the best ride in all of Universal Orlando, if not at least a top tier ride. And most importantly, perhaps, by Universal having this land standing, any characters that are featured in the land are not able to be used by Disney, which is why the only Marvel attraction you see at Disney World is a Guardians of the Galaxy ride, because of course, when this land opened in 1999, the Guardians of the Galaxy were completely irrelevant, so of course they were not featured in the land. Now, if Disney continues to run Marvel's brand reputation into the ground, then sure, maybe eventually Universal will get rid of this land, but I can tell you right now, that isn't anytime soon. On a similar note is Toon Lagoon, a land that likely would not see either of its attractions close without the entire land being completely redone. And when looking at this land, it's pretty undeniable most of the properties and characters featured in the land are at the very least outdated, if not completely irrelevant to today's audiences. And sure, that's concerning to Universal, but what's interesting is that these two attractions, Dully Do Right's Rips Off Falls and Popeye and Bluto's Bill Drap Barges, on hot summer days, continue to be immensely popular, regularly getting hour long waits. And there are two things that are true of these rides. One is that they get you absolutely soaked which is perfect for when you're hanging out in the Florida heat, and they're undeniably two of the best water rides currently standing. Try and tell me a better raft ride than Popeyes. I know a lot of people don't like raft rides because they get you super wet, and they don't really like Popeyes because it gets you super wet. But seriously, try and tell me a raft ride that comes even remotely close in quality to Popeyes. I most certainly couldn't tell you one. And both of these rides always close each year for one month for regular annual refurbishments, allowing the rides to not really have their age catch up to them. So the bottom line is, these rides are far too popular and far too good to close outright. I would argue that it's almost a surefire thing, that if we see either of these rides go, they're going to be re-themes and not full-on replacements. But with that being the case, do you really think that given everything we've talked about here so far, and the fact they also have Epic Universe on their plate, do you really think that Universal is going to prioritize a re-theme over actually taking care of an attraction that needs to be replaced? Or building a new attraction that needs to be added to Epic Universe? I just don't see where this fits in the formula. Sure, you could re-theme Toon Lagoon and put a property in that actually brings people to the park because nobody's coming to Island's Adventure because they have Popeye. But dedicating the time, money, and ultimately capacity in order to take care of this is just a not worthwhile move for Universal any time in the future. Could maybe Universal look at this post-2030? I think yes. But right now, there's too many big fish to fry to be worried about re-theming Toon Lagoon. So enough about uh, these entire lands. Let's talk about a singular ride in Islands of Adventure that is on the chopping block. And that's the cat in the hat. No, Seuss Landing is not going. I don't even need to defend that point. Just accept it. It's reality. But the Cat in the Hat is a terrible ride. All right? I mean, I've been preaching this for years. It's awful. It used to be a ride I actually loved. I loved the Cat in the Hat movie, and I quite enjoyed the ride. But age has caught up to it. It's slowed down. It's spinning. Its animatronics have moved into B mode and barely worked. The sound effects aren't even lined up with anything that happens in the ride. It is in complete shambles. 
So given the fact that Seuss Landing is not going anywhere, and Cat in the Hat is the second most popular Seuss character behind the Grinch, uh, this ride's not going anywhere, right? Even though it's old and it's actually aged worse than any ride perhaps in Universal's history, the best we can hope for is a refurbishment, which honestly even I'm doubtful of, even though it is one of the oldest rides across the resort. The bottom line is that Universal doesn't really gain much from this. It's very similar to retheming Toon Lagoon. You're losing capacity for a little bit before this uh, refurbishment is done. And then when it reopens, it's like, okay, I mean, is the popularity of these rides really changed? Probably not. Even if you made the Cat in the Hat 10 times better, you brought it into the modern age, would it really become that much more of a popular attraction? Maybe for a little bit, but I think long term, it probably goes back to where it is today. So that's why they don't really care to do anything with Cat in the Hat. And it's likely to stay the way it is uh, for a long time. Now, maybe, you know, once 2030 comes along and the picture for Universal changes significantly, maybe there's room for a refurbishing Cat in the Hat. Or maybe something uh, astronomically terrible happens with its operating system that would require a refurbishment. But until that happens, honestly, I don't see Cat in the Hat going anywhere, even though it probably should. And that brings me to the last ride I'm going to talk about here today. And it's a ride that probably a good amount of you have been waiting for me to talk about. And that's Jurassic Park River Adventure. Which, like Cat in the Hat, has kind of fallen off the wagon. The animatronics, uh, well, sometimes they work, sometimes they don't. And pretty much across the board, they don't really look great. Their elastic skin is falling off of them. It kind of looks like they're melting in some cases. But I have to say, the very fundamentals of the ride, unlike Cat in the Hat, which those have been changed, for Jurassic Park River Adventure, the ride at its core is largely the same as it was on opening day. It's still a really good ride despite age catching up with it in a number of places. And this is further proven by the fact that it does tend to get fairly popular on certain days. Now part of this is because it's a water ride like the Toon Lagoon rides which benefit from being able to cool people off on hot days. But I think that people actually do think that this ride is good as well because even on cooler days you will often see people riding this thing. But here's the thing, there is precedent for replacing this ride. Its sister attraction in Hollywood, Jurassic Park the Ride, was replaced by Jurassic World the Ride just a couple years ago. This ride just took the bare bones of the attraction, its water flume aspect, and added in new animatronics, new story beats, and new scenes to kind of make it a new experience. So the question ever since then has been, Will Universal bring this version of the ride over to Orlando? With the opening of Velocicoaster a couple years ago, that was the first instance of Jurassic World really being heavily implemented into the Jurassic Park land in Islands of Adventure, perhaps signaling the complete overhaul of the land from Jurassic Park to Jurassic World. And if they were to replace Jurassic Park River Adventure with Jurassic World the ride, that would complete this transformation. But I have to say, this is probably one of the closest calls to make, because it seems that the Jurassic World trilogy is pretty much over. I mean, there is a new Jurassic Park movie coming out next year, but we don't really know what that's going to be, and at least at the time of recording this, the current rumors is that it's going to take place between Jurassic Park 1 and The Lost World. So, it's not even going to be a Jurassic World movie, so does it doesn't even make sense to retheme this entire land to Jurassic World, or just kind of keep it this mishmash of all things Jurassic. On top of that, you also have to consider, well, just how popular is Jurassic World the ride in Hollywood? Has retheming it actually increased the popularity of the ride? If it hasn't really seen any increase in popularity, then maybe there isn't really much purpose or reason to make the change in Orlando. And maybe perhaps a massive refurbishment is a better path forward for the ride. But I don't even know if they'll go that far. Who knows? Like I said, refurbishments, I don't really think they're on the table. A few years ago, they most certainly were. When Mummy and Hulk were getting theirs, they were on the table. Right now, at this very moment, I don't think they are. Post Epic Universe, they'll be back on the menu. So I have to say, for all the rides I talked about today, the one attraction that my crystal ball can't quite get a proper read on is Jurassic Park River Adventure because I don't really know if they're going to retheme it or not. It's a tough call. Uh, right now, I would lean towards they're probably not going to touch it, but we'll see. So there you have it, folks. The attractions I'm putting my money on to close, replace, or be refurbished by the end of the decade are Hollywood Rip Ride Rocket, The Simpsons, and Men in Black. 
and that is an attraction ideas guarantee. You could take that to the bank. This is the cold hard facts, the lock of the week. But keep in mind, this is just a small picture of what Universal has planned through the end of the decade. Obviously, we already know they're working on Epic Universe. That's going to open up next year. But Universal already has some attractions closed. I've talked about Fear Factor Live and the Lost Continent in this video. What is Universal going to do with those? Not to mention that they also have backstage areas that they're moving over to the new Epic Universe plot, giving Universal Studios Florida and Islands of Adventure new room to expand to that they haven't had before. I made a whole video on it. Should be in the middle of your screen right now. So if you haven't watched it, check it out. But anyways, let me know what you guys think in the comments. I'll see you all next time. Peace.